In this section, we will be studying dynamic motor starting, the input data required, as well as study case options. Let's select motor 1, which is a 500 horsepower motor, as the dynamic machine we would like to start. Three pieces of information are required. On the model page, on the load page, and on the inertia page. We'll start off with the model page, where you can select the circuit model of this motor from the library. Note that this model should be entered in for the motor you're trying to accelerate. The data in the library is sample data for a specific 500 horsepower motor. The circuit model information includes the rotor and starter impedance values. Note that the nameplate data, the loading information, short circuit, and the characteristics will now be updated based on the model selected from the library. The left graph will show you the circuit model with the appropriate impedances, and the right graph shows you the torque slip curve calculated based on the circuit model which you can print individually. Next, we'll go to the load model page where you'll be specifying the driven or the connected load. The connected load can be specified as a polynomial equation which is a function of speed and torque. The plot shows you the representation of that equation. A0 to A3 are the coefficients which have been entered in the library that give you the required torque at different percent speed. The brown line shows you the motor torque. The green line represents the connected or driven load torque. As you can see from the curves, the required load torque is lower than the available machine torque indicating that under normal operating conditions, this motor should accelerate successfully. The next piece of the information is WR squared, or WK squared, for the motor coupling gear and the load. If these are individually available, the total is shown in the total column. If the values are not known individually, but as a total shaft, they can be entered in any of the fields. ETAP uses the total value for the acceleration study. We can now go to the motor starting mode and in our study case select motor 1 to be accelerated. Our next event will be the acceleration of the synchronous motor, which you can disable. We can now select a different report for this study. Click on the very first button, which is the dynamic motor acceleration button. Critical and marginal alerts are shown automatically depending on the condition of the system. The time slider allows you to navigate through voltage and current at different steps of time. T equals one second is where we accelerated the motor. Since this is a dynamic acceleration, you will see the lock rotor current slowly decaying as you move the motor starting time slider.
Once the motor is close to rated speed, the lock rotor current will drop sharply and the motor will start drawing full load amp. At four and a half seconds, this motor has started drawing full load amp. The same information can be seen with the help of plots. Since only one motor was started dynamically, we can see various plots for this motor, including slip. You can check all plots and click OK. Some of the plots include motor terminal voltage, acceleration torque, motor real power, motor torque, load torque, the reactive power demand, real power demand, bus voltage, machine current. As you can see, the curve is a smooth shape indicating the circuit model was used for this calculation and the motor slip. The motor started accelerating at t equals 1 and reached rated slip at around 4.5 seconds giving us an acceleration time of 3.5 seconds. If you open up the composite network you can also include the dynamic models for a synchronous motor this is a 100 horsepower synchronous motor. We can now go to the inertia page and specify WK square or H in the megawatt second per MVA. And then Go to the load model page and specify the connected or driven load. In our study case, we can now go to event 2 and activate this event. Then let's run our calculation again. If we see the plot for bus 5, we can now see that motor 1 starts off at 1 second. At t equals 2 seconds, there's a further dip indicating the start of another motor that impacts the same bus. Now, we have two motors that you can select simultaneously and see the slip for both motors on the same plot. Synchronous motor starts at 2 seconds and accelerates fairly quickly. Motor 1 starts at 1 second and takes about 3.5 seconds to accelerate.